in the in the mid-state uh, we're actually standing on pretty much the fall line and if uh, memory serves pretty much south of the, this this was actually almost beachfront property if you will because south of here was ocean and there's actually a a fossilized whale that hangs right here in the museum that was found not far away. That's right, that's Ziggy, and I'm sure everybody knows about Ziggy. Uh, I'm really kind of new to Ziggy, but you know, it's uh, a native Georgian um, fossil here that we have in the museum, and um, we have things in the museum store that are Ziggy related for those um, prehistoric inter interested people. It's all here at the Macon Museum of Arts and Sciences. Once again, that's a look at the 25th anniversary, silver anniversary of the Festival of Trees here at the Macon Museum of Arts and Sciences. You want to find out more, it is 477-3232, the number to call some very gorgeous Christmas trees. Maybe uh, give you some ideas for decorating your home, maybe not for this year, but for the next one. All right, that's going to do it for this segment, but coming up on the Georgia Journal, we'll be taking you to highlights of the 54th annual Warner Robins Christmas Parade. That's coming up right after the break. I'm Todd Wilson. Stay tuned. As our holiday hop around the Mid-State continues, let's head back to Warner Robins for some highlights of the 54th annual Christmas Parade. There are over 150 floats, marching bands, ROTC units, beauty queens, and more in this year's annual event. And of course, bringing up the rear was Santa himself. Right now, let's give a listen to a performance by the Northside Eagle Blue Wind Marching Band. <laughs> Treat for the years, especially during football season. Of course, always a staple at the annual Warner Robins Christmas Parade. We head back to Perry now for a stage celebration of the season. Perry Players Community Theater, who, by the way, are celebrating their 30th season, had another Christmas offering, Christmas Bells. A comedy set in Faro, Texas. And audiences got a chance to see not only Santa, but Elvis as well in this humorous look at planning, and then performing a holiday pageant. You know, maybe Mama just needs a little nappy poo. What Mama needs is to get these babies born so she can be a normal-sized human being again. Yesterday, I was at the store, and a woman asked if I knew where the petite department was. I said, do I look like I know where the petite department is? I am sick of being supersized, dub doubly. You hear me? I am sick of it. You know, maybe we need to talk about something else. Now why don't you tell Santa what you want for Christmas? Fine. I want Santa to get a vasectomy. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. Hell no. There's not enough milk and cookies in the world for Santa to ever consider doing that. You asked what I want, so... So, so give her up that and stick it under the tree, because Mrs. Claus is not going to have another surprise like this again. First time in 27 years. Well, I don't know. Evidently, the deacons thought that the program needed new blood. I only hope that that honey Ray Futrell knows the mess she's getting into. What? Of course, I have to let it go. After all, it is Christmas, right? And as Tiny Tim would say, God help us, everyone. <laughs> well, of course I know it's God bless us, everyone. But girl, this is Pharaoh, Texas. We need all the help we can get. They're gonna feel like they just seen the baby Jesus born on Broadway. <laughs> For starters, the wise man will be accompanied down the aisle by a camel. A real live camel? Even better, a two-person Campbell costume I rented from the Waco Lot Opera Company. And it won't be just three wise men either. 
I finagled a special celebrity appearance by none other than Cece Wyndham, the lady who hosts Hospitality House every morning on Channel 15. In the flesh? And not only will Cece portray a fourth wise person, she'll also present the Holy Family with the gift of a butternut squash lasagna. <laughs> And that's not all. Well, I don't know how you can top that. Oh, there's only one way. Mary and Joseph will be blessed with a visitation by the ghost of Christmas yet to come in the person of the other king, Elvis. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting chills. <laughs> Doris Pendle's got the wig, the cape, and the glasses. You tell me one verse of lovely tender's not going to bring down the house. <laughs> well, no wonder the cable access station in Sweet Gum wants to show it on TV Live. Why, I bet they play it over and over every year, just like White Christmas and Shawshank Redemption. TV coverage. <laughs> TV coverage is exactly why I'm jazzing it up with lights and costumes and a flying angel. And so when stars under this angel's costume, is gonna make it look like she's floating in the heavens. And see, I just got the second star in place. Oh, good, let's have a look, show us. Oh, come on, come on. I'm stuck. Oh. All right. What do you think? <laughs> I have a feeling the wise men might not follow the right star. <laughs> Tell you what. Let's focus on casting. We need to get us some shepherds. Any ideas? Well, how about Chip Lawless? Oh, now, Chip Lawless and I had a little flirtation. <laughs> it didn't end well. I don't think that'd be too comfortable for either one of us. <laughs> Who else? Well, there's DeVerl McSpain. He's definitely got shepherd potential. Oh, now, DeVerl and I, we had a little <laughs> he was real bitter when it ended. <laughs> Next, Johnny Ralph Elmore. Oh, now Johnny Ralph and I had a little flirtation. <laughs> and honey, this might be easier if we just focus on men you haven't had a little flirtation with. <laughs> well, then I'm going to need a little time to come up with somebody. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have a request. I want you to be Mary. Oh, I am. I'm a very happy person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I don't mean Mary as in Merry Christmas. I mean Mary as in the Virgin Mary. <laughs> You're perfect. Oh, no. No, 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 ma'am. I am not good with crowds. Oh, you don't know that? Yes, I do. When they asked me to give that demonstration last month at the biannual cow insemination workshop, <laughs> well, halfway through my demonstration, I just froze. I didn't know which end was up. <laughs> Even the cow felt sorry for me. I could tell by the look on her face when she turned around to see what was happening. <laughs> oh, GJ, you just forget about your inseminating nightmares. I'm counting on you, sure. And I know you're going to want to be a part of it when you hear the name I came up with for the Christmas program. What is it? Honey Ray You Trailing Company proudly presents Bethlehem of Palooza. <laughs> well, as we leave the stage and Santa behind, we head to break in this Christmas special on Todd Wilson's Georgia Journal. Coming up, we'll have more holiday highlights, more music from the Band of the Air Force Reserve. And we'll be visiting with the jolly old fat guy himself. Stay tuned.
And we welcome you back to this holiday special edition of Todd Wilson's Georgia Journal. Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. As we continue on, we're going to take you inside this palatial Italian Renaissance mansion known as the Hay House here in Macon, Georgia. It's all decked out for the holidays and it is an exquisite representation of architectural styling from over 100 years ago. And it's decorated just for the season. Hay House was constructed in 1859 and was built by William Butler Johnson, who was a local entrepreneur and businessman. It is in the Italian Renaissance style of architecture and is considered to be one of the foremost examples of that in the United States in terms of not only architectural stylings, but the technological sophistication of the house. Uh, for instance, it had hot and cold running water, a speaker tube system, gas lighting and coal burning fireplaces well before that was very commonplace in this area and throughout the nation. This year we are decorating our for our Home for the Holidays tours and what we are doing this year is trying to showcase the season as it would have appeared for the various families that resided in the building. Uh, this is done through a lot of lavish uh, floral arrangements, beautifully decorated Christmas trees as you see behind me here, and just showing different seasonal interpretations from the mid-19th century all the way up into the 20th century. So truly something for everyone to see. Now the tree decorated as it is with the electric candles back in the Oh, 100 years ago, they would have been regular candles. Indeed, right? and usually Christmas trees would have gone up on Christmas Day. Uh, what would have been the tradition for that is that Christmas trees started coming into the forefront of the United States in the mid 1850s, uh, early 1850s, excuse me, uh, would have been put up Christmas Eve and taken out immediately Christmas Day because with open flames on a tree, it could give a whole new definition to the word Yule log. So uh, we try to protect that as much as possible and simulate that to keep the fire marshal happy here. The P.L. Hay House became a National Historic Landmark back in 1974. It was built between 1855 and 1859, so this marks its 153rd Christmas. Originally built by wealthy businessman William Johnston, the home is almost a work of art in itself. The home is expansive, covering over 16,000 square feet, featuring 24 principal rooms. The home has been a residence for the Johnston family, the Felton family, and finally the Hay family before it became a unit of the Georgia Trust for Historic Preservation back in 1977. Now, since then, the Trust has been working diligently to restore what was once known as the Palace of the South. Hay House is still undergoing an active restoration campaign as we are continuing to uh, evaluate uh, and bring a proper interpretation to the periods that we are invoking here in the house. We interpret all three of the families that lived here in the building from the Johnston families from the mid-1850s to the late 19th century, uh, the Felton family from the late 19th century to the early 1920s, and then the Hay family from the uh, 1920s forward into the 1960s. So truly someone that comes to Hay House we'll see a time capsule of the various periods that these families lived here. Do you know the exact cost of the home when it was built? $104,000. $104,000. And to put that in perspective, the average Greek Revival mansion, your stereotypical gone with the wind type of house would have been about between ten and 14000 The governor's mansion in Milledgeville that was built in 1839 cost $50,000 to construct. This house cost $104,000 in 1859. So this was among the elite of the elite in terms of architecture built in antebellum America. And that would translate into the millions. Hundreds now. of millions actually today. And just the the attention to detail and the craftsmanship that went in to making the archways and these beautiful ceilings. I mean, it's it's a lost art. You know, it's surprising that in a way it would seem it's a lost art, but there are still many conservators, craftsmen, and plaster specialists that can replicate and repair. Uh, as we go through our restoration process, there's pieces of the plaster that will take cast from mold and repair little bits that have been lost over the years. So it is something that is still there, though not as nearly as commonplace as it once was, as homes today are kind of manufactured in a cookie cutter fashion, where craftsmen really individually design homes for particular contracts at this time. The annual holiday decorations only add to the remarkable craftsmanship that went into building this home. The trees and other holiday events were made possible by funding from the Medical Center of Central Georgia and by the Bank of America Corporation. Now beyond tours during the holiday season, this classic home also hosts special events 
year-round. We do have a very active uh, rental program here, and we open up for weddings, parties, receptions, and we encourage folks to contact us if uh, we can meet your needs in some way in that respect. Any special mementos or maybe decorations of Christmas's past that actually resurface this time of year? One of the things that you will always see in the reception room of the house, the Hay family traditionally put what was called a fox tree in there, which is one of those Christmas trees that was covered in the fake snow, and we always bring that tradition back here on a yearly basis. And finally, uh, the uh, Christmas decorations, how long will you have the house decorated this year? We are going to run our Christmas decorations through New Year's Eve. The only day that will be closed in December is Christmas Day itself. So if you're looking for a chance to come out and experience the holidays in such a beautiful historic site or a place to bring family or guests from out of town, we'd love to have you. And uh, folks want information? Uh, please contact us by calling 742-8155 or on the web at www.hayhouse.org. I urge you, if you happen to live in the mid-state and haven't taken time out to see this beautiful Italian Renaissance home, the P.L. Hay House here in Macon, do so. It is well worth the trip, whether you see it decked out for Christmas or just any other time of year. It's a beautiful example of craftsmanship and architecture the way things used to be. Hope you're enjoying this holiday edition of Todd Wilson's Georgia Journal as we continue on with more Holiday Fair right after this. Here on TV 38, stay with us. Welcome back to Todd Wilson's Georgia Journal and our Holiday Special. In keeping with the season though, let's head back to the Museum of Aviation for more holiday cheer from the band of the Air Force Reserve. Or the fields we go Laughing all the way Bells all pop till ring Making spirits bright What fun it is to ride and sing A sleighing song tonight Jingle bells, jingle bells Jingle all the way Oh, what fun it is to ride In a one-horse open sleigh Sergeant Brian Jenner. 